47 years ago, when Neil Armstrong took that one small step and that giant leap, Tim Peake was not yet born. But there will be many in this planetarium today who have vivid, indeed formative memories of that first human landing on the moon. Perhaps as sleepy children, they were allowed out of their beds to watch those grainy pictures of that momentous occasion. Pablo Picasso is alleged to have said of that event, it means nothing to me. But the great artist was for once behind rather than ahead of the times. The inspirational impact of space exploration and space science on successive generations has been and continues to be immense. When the University of Leicester conceived the idea of this National Space Centre as a fitting celebration of the millennium, it recognised that the fascination with space felt by our ancestors since the beginning of human life could be imaginatively employed to inspire young people to pursue science and engineering in many different ways. And this same ambition is perfectly reflected in Tim Peake's remarkable Principia mission and six-month voyage on the International Space Station. This would have seemed an unlikely outcome when Tim was born in 1972 in the Chichester area, the son of a midwife and a journalist. Britain at the time had no space program worthy of the name, even though this university had already been actively involved in space missions for several years. All the running was being made by the USA and the Soviet Union. The possibility that someone from the UK might join the select band of astronauts and cosmonauts seemed remote indeed. Tim, leading a normal schoolboy's life in West Sussex, may have imagined going into space, but had no such expectations for himself. Though there was a clue to his future career in an early fascination with flying, prompted by visits to air shows with his father. That interest became reality when Tim, having trained at Sandhurst, joined the Army Air Corps, qualifying as a helicopter pilot two years later. Tim describes this as the start of a four-year adventure flying reconnaissance missions all over the world, including active service during the 1990s Balkans War. By this time, the list of Brits in space was no longer empty. Helen Sharman had flown on a Russian Soyuz mission in 1991. The competition she won for selection had shown how much enthusiasm there was in the country for involvement in space exploration, but it remained an isolated achievement. Meanwhile, Tim went on to become a helicopter instructor and developed an interest in aircraft performance, which led in turn to membership of the prestigious Empire Test Pilot Schools and a degree in flight dynamics and evaluation. He became the senior test pilot for the Apache helicopter, a role in which he relished pushing aircraft where nobody had taken them before, in speed or altitude. For many, this career would have satisfied any desire for adventure, but not for Tim. In 2008, he happened to see, his words, a European Space Agency advert for new astronauts. His extensive flying and other experience and his academic qualifications made him well placed to apply, but he was up against over 8,000 other applicants. He successfully negotiated the demanding assessments spread over a year, testing his intelligence and skills, memory, spatial awareness and concentration, his personality and his health, and was offered one of six new places in the European Astronauts Corps. There followed a move to Cologne with his family and an even more physically and mentally demanding period of training, some in the classroom, some more practical, including team working, long periods underwater and underground, spacewalk training, and for Tim, Tim apparently the hardest part, learning Russian. Only after all this was he finally selected for a specific mission, becoming the first British ESA astronaut to live and work in space and only the second person, after Helen, to wear the Union flag as a patch on his spacesuit. Tim's six-month mission involved many other firsts, ranging from the first spacewalk by a British ESA astronaut and the first space participant in the London Marathon to becoming the first person to enjoy a bacon sandwich as his first space meal, specially created for him by Heston Blumenthal. Principia was, of course, 
far more than an opportunity to fly the flag or enter the record book. Like all ESA missions, it had a serious scientific purpose, and Tim conducted more than 30 experiments for ESA. More remarkable, the mission involved the largest educational program ever put together in support of a European astronaut. Activities, live links, and resources designed for schools were outstanding features of the mission, covering biology, rocket science, fitness, that's where the marathon comes in, and food science, there's that bacon sandwich. And today we've had the launch of Astro Academy Principia, a series of teaching experiments conducted in space to illustrate fundamental aspects of physics and chemistry, comparing the results in microgravity with those in classrooms on Earth. The full program, including experiment kit, procedures, teaching films, post-flight analysis and support guides, was devised and built by the National Space Academy, qualified for spaceflight by the University of Leicester, and conducted by Tim on the International Space Station. It will support science students and teachers across Europe for many years to come. 55 years after Gagarin, space travel is still dangerous and immensely demanding. Tim's own exceptional personality has played an enormous part in the outstanding success of his mission. Those who have observed him at work, both on the ground and in space, testify that Tim has the necessary characteristics in abundance. He is calm, cool, and collected in the face of some of the greatest challenges an individual can encounter, a master of the detail of his tasks, and at the same time, charming, relaxed, and humorous. 2,000 years ago, Seneca said, our universe is a sorry little affair unless it has in it something for every age to investigate. Tim Peake has demonstrated the value of the continuous urge to investigate, and he has given us a model of how it should be done. Mr. President and Vice-Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and the Council, I present Timothy Nigel Peake that you may confer upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. Congratulations. Well done. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you very much indeed. Well, it certainly is an honor. It's an honor to be here and a huge honor to accept this uh, honorary degree from the University of Leicester, an event made even more special by being in this wonderful planetarium, named in honor of one of my heroes, Sir Patrick Moore. Uh, now, science, I think, has a wonderful way of transcending national boundaries, of transcending language, of political divisions and political differences. And to me, nowhere is that more apparent than on board the International Space Station and the Space Station program. It's an, enormous, it's an enormous privilege to live and work on board the space station for six months, not just because, of course, you're in space, but more than that, it's a privilege because you're working with so many scientists, so many engineers from all around the world, thousands of people who are dealing with experiments, and your job is to really uh, be the final culmination of hours and hours of work that have gone into these, space, uh, into these experiments and the cutting-edge technology that we work with on board the space station. One of the most remarkable things I found about day-to-day uh, -day activities in space is that one minute I might be in the European laboratory and I might be managing an experiment on the electromagnetic levitator, investigating new novel metal alloys that we can, we can simply only manufacture in microgravity. And I'll be talking to the Columbus Control Center in Munich in Germany. And then the next minute I'll be floating across to the Japanese laboratory where we'd be growing protein crystals for medical research, crystals that can only grow in microgravity in, in such pure manner, in such a large manner, and by growing these very pure protein crystals, of course, we can identify much better drugs to counter the disease-causing proteins that we have here on planet Earth. And I'd be talking to scientists and engineers in scuba just outside Tokyo, and then I'd be floating down to the US laboratory where we'd be doing investigations into flame combustion techniques that are going to revolutionize and modernize the way that our engines work here down on planet Earth in the aviation industry, but also for our future propulsion techniques that we're going to need on our spacecraft that are going to take us to the moon and take us back to Mars. 
an absolutely wonderful environment to work in. But as much as I enjoyed these physical sciences, to me, the life sciences were some of the, those experiments that I took the most personal satisfaction from. Partly because, of course, we are the human guinea pigs as astronauts for these, these experiments. And personally, I'd signed up to about 25 of these life science experiments, um, and ranging from a number of different things, uh, investigating our cardiovascular system, investigating the muscle and bone atrophy that happens in space, investigating skin aging, investigating the vision deterioration that occurs in spaceflight as well. Airway inflammation, which is going to have the benefit of asthma sufferers on, on back, back on planet Earth. So a whole range of different life science experiments that we were undertaking. And to me, that was very satisfying. And of course, as mentioned as well, a big part of Mission Principia was the educational outreach program that the UK Space Agency and the European Space Agency ran. And I'm very happy that uh, Jeremy Curtis is here today, actually, who is responsible for the UK Space Agency's part of the education outreach program. A program that was the most successful run by any European astronaut and has reached over a million school children and students. Um, and to me, that is, is the lasting legacy of Mission Principia, is to be able to try and encourage students not only to get involved in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but our ambition was to reach out beyond that, to really use space as an interesting and exciting platform to engage students across a whole different diverse range of subjects from art, drama, music, nutrition, and exercise. And so, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much for this honor to get. It is a huge uh, honor to receive it, and in recognition of all the work, not just by myself, but of everybody who has made Mission Principia such a resounding success. Thank you very much.